Supporters of equal pay for men and women have declared today Equal Pay Day to highlight the wage gap between the sexes. They say that a woman needed to work all of last year right through this, the 104th day of 2015, to earn what a man made in 2014 alone. Well, everyone is getting a raise at a Seattle-based company. Anthony Mason now with a story you'd probably like your boss to see. Dan Price made the announcement of the pay raise at his company's quarterly meeting. And we're going to have a minimum uh, $70,000 pay rate for everyone that works here. As the CEO explained that minimum salaries at Gravity Payments, a Seattle-based credit card processing company, would jump to $50,000 immediately and to $70,000 within three years, his 120 employees sat in stunned silence before bursting into applause and giving their boss a standing ovation. I think it's life-changing for everybody in various ways. For Jose Garcia, a 29-year-old equipment supervisor with $54,000 in student debt, his $33,000 salary jumps to $50,000 immediately. And maybe I cried when I called my mom. <laughs> Price says he was inspired by a Princeton study that showed that emotional well-being rises as incomes rise up to $75,000. So I realized that people that are making less than that, there's an emotional cost that they have every single day. And you only get to live once. Entrepreneur Magazine's Entrepreneur of the Year in 2014. Price says the move will cut his company's profits almost in half for now. To cushion the blow, he slashed his own million-dollar paycheck to $70,000. I want to be a part of the solution to inequality in this country. And so if corporate America also wants to be a part of that solution, that would make me really happy. What matters to me is that the problem gets solved. Leah Brassage tells me gravity workers don't even overuse that benefit. The average worker took only two days more when they made paid vacations unlimited. On Cairo 7's Facebook page, Price was lauded as an inspiration. One wrote, I'm impressed by this man. He put his money where his mouth is, literally. He's taken a $930,000 cut in his pay to help 30 people have better lives. And we're all like-minded. We all are, work really hard, so it's, uh, it really comes down to trust. Gravity sales reps around the country, by the way, don't work on commission. They work on a flat rate. When they do better than expected, they flat out get a higher rate of pay. And we're live outside the company headquarters in Ballard. I'm Gary Horker. It pays to be the students. boss. According to Bloomberg, the ratio of CEO to worker pay has increased 1,000% since 1950. 1,000%. Bloomberg's report found that on average, Fortune 500 CEOs make 204 times as much as regular workers. That's up from 120 times as much in 2000, 42 times as much in 1980, and only 20 times as much in 1950. And that's just on average. Most companies don't disclose median pay for workers. So Bloomberg calculated ratios based on the U.S. government's industry-specific averages for pay and benefits of rank-and-file workers. Here are some of the top offenders. Ousted to J.C. Penney CEO Ronald Johnson made 1,795 times as much as his average worker. Abercrombie & Fitch's CEO Michael Jeffries, he makes 1,640 times as much as most of his employees. Starbucks head Howard Schultz makes 1,130 five times the average barista pays to be the boss yes it does and I'm glad you I'm glad you said it pays to be the boss because that to me speaks to the problem right there right um, bosses have this inherent advantage over employees in terms of how much mm -hmm. capital they have access to I'm not mad at bosses for having the money Same. yeah I'm mad I'm mad the workers can't get access to a living wage right and this is one of the problems we've seen with the last 15 years I mean really the the 10 prior to President Obama's term in office which we have a lost decade yeah. where you had median incomes just flatlining and so when we say median incomes flatlining we're not talking about the people at the very top who God bless them because you and I want to be at the very top we're yeah. talking about your run-of-the-mill worker. I mean, they are not getting paid any more than they were getting paid 10 years ago, and that's part of why you see this incredible disparity, because people at the top continue to make more and more money. Right. Those of us who are at the bottom, the middle, our wages have stagnated. It gets frustrating, though, when you see how much more they make than their workers, when they're the ones yeah. resisting. When you see CEOs of places like Starbucks or the Walmarts of the world who won't give people, you know, necessarily living wages, who won't uh, raise the minimum wage, or who push back against state attempts to raise minimum wage, or God forbid, a federal minimum wage increase. When I see them push back, and I know that they're making a thousand times what everyone else is making, it, it irritates me. 
I don't know. Yeah, and I have to think that it's bad for business in the sense, like, it might be good for your bottom line in a temporary sense, but you want workers who feel loyal to your company, who feel like they are part of it. And I feel like over the long term, you probably see some depreciation based on that.